lessons you learn as you age is that the time it takes to heal is longer the older you get. Now, when you're young, an injury is merely an inconvenience. However, when you're older, an injury will usually mean time in hospital and a lengthy recovery. Now, Monday, we look at the authority of Jesus that uh, he demonstrated in his ability to cast out demons and silence them. Well, today we continue thinking about the authority of Jesus. However, our focus today is his authority over disease and illness. Uh, Mark 1 verse 29. As soon as they left the synagogue, they went with James and John to the home of Simon and Andrew. Simon's mother-in-law was in bed with a fever and they told Jesus about her. So he went to her, took her hand and helped her up. The fever left her and she began to wait on them. That evening, after the sunset, after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and demon-possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons, but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Now, you can imagine the joy that Simon's mother-in-law would have felt, you know, because a fever leaves you feeling run down and miserable. And yet, having been healed, she waits on them, not, not simply because, you know, that was the role of the woman in the house, but because she had the energy and vigour to serve Jesus, who had served her. Now, we'll see more of Jesus' ability to heal as we continue through the gospel, but it's important to note here that Jesus not only has authority over demons, but he has authority over illness and disease as well. Now, word travelled quickly after Simon's mother-in-law was healed because as evening approached, we're told that the whole town had gathered at the home and Jesus healed many, many people. Okay, Mark continues. Mark chapter 1, verse 35. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Simon and his companions went to look for him. And when they found him, they exclaimed, Everyone is looking for you. Jesus replied, Let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. And so he travelled throughout Galilee, preaching in their synagogues and driving out demons. I do wonder if Jesus needed space away from the chaos or whether he needed time to refresh and replenish his energy or whether he simply needed to commune with his father and kind of consider the next steps in terms of his public ministry. Whatever the reason that led Jesus to a quiet and secluded place that he could pray, what we learn from his words, from his mouth, is that healing and casting out demons was not the main reason for his presence among us. And Jesus came to preach the good news, to preach about the kingdom of God and to call people to repent of their sin and believe in him. Okay, and it's, it's not that the healing miracles or his ability to cast out demons are unimportant, okay, because they testify to the authority of Jesus. They show that he cares and they, they cause men, women and children to wrestle with who he is. But at the end of the day, it's the message of the gospel. It's the message of Jesus' life, death and resurrection that everyone must put their trust in. And so, friends, with that in mind, why don't you take a minute to consider how you often um, you speak about Jesus to your family or your friends or your neighbours. You know, our lifestyle is important because like Jesus' miracles, our lives testify to our faith. But it's the words of the gospel that change us hearts. It's the message that Jesus gave his life so that sinners can have eternal life that will lead people who don't know him to put their faith in him. And so why don't you consider that and then spend a, a minute praying about that. Mm -hmm.